Hey everybody, this is Andrew from MobileBurn.com and I've got something everyone wants to see. The Samsung Galaxy S4. When you first glance at the Samsung Galaxy S4, you might be tempted to say, hey, it looks just like the S3. Well, that's not quite true. It's actually a little bit slimmer because they've made some upgrades, but they've also changed the design slightly. For instance, you'll notice that this screen is a 5-inch screen, so they've upgraded the size of that. Also, when you look at the side, it doesn't really have that seamless flow from one end to one end like it had before. It's more of a flat surface. And on the sides, it has a kind of like a metal rim. It's actually a very hard plastic, but it uh, looks like metal. And on the back, you've got the same similar glossy plastic material. It's very smooth. You can kind of, you can't really see it on here, but it has a very fine pattern on the back. But when you're holding the device, it is very light because it's plastic rather than metal. So it feels incredibly light in your hand. Now, if you're someone who is not a fan of Samsung's plastic, that might be a problem for you. But most people don't seem to have an issue with it. And the phone itself feels nice in your hand. It's big but it's very easy to make one hand operation possible. Uh, for the sake of comparison, let me show you how big it is. Here you've got an iPhone 5. When you put it on, you can see naturally that the Galaxy S4 is a little bit taller and wider. So you're gonna get more screen real estate, of course. And, and furthermore, when you see it next to the Samsung Galaxy uh, Note 2, you see that this is a lot bigger, but see, you can actually make it a lot smaller and still get that big screen. This is a 5-inch screen compared to the 5.5 of the Galaxy Note 2. But the Galaxy S4 is considerably smaller. And, you know, that pays off in the end. Let's do a quick tour of the hardware. On the right-hand side, you have the power button. On the left-hand side, you have the volume up and down. It's a little thinner and flatter than it has been in the past. At the top... You have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and you also have an IR LED control. So you can actually control your television if you have a compatible TV or you have a set-top box that'll work with it. On the bottom, you have the home key. Now, a lot of people have complained about the physical home key. I haven't had a problem until this because for some reason, when you're using the phone, sometimes when you press the home button, it doesn't respond right away. And that's become an issue for me at times where when I'm using uh, the phone, I'll press the home button and then it doesn't respond right away. That time it did, but there are times when I press it and you have to really press down on it for it to register. It's not as soft and responsive as it has been in the past. Uh, on the bottom, you have your micro USB jack and it is MHL 2.0 capable, so you can plug it into your television with the MHL cord and still be able to charge your phone as well as connect it to a bigger display. Uh, on the back, you have a 13 megapixel camera. Uh, we have another video showing the camera. Uh, needless to say, the camera is good. It's not perfect. There are some issues with it, but it has a, a flash below that as well. On the front, you have a 2 megapixel camera. And there are also some sensors for some gestures that we're going to get into later on. Let me remove this really quick. All right. Uh, the phone has 16 gigabytes of internal memory or 32 or 64, but there's a, a big chunk of that is not accessible to you. You're only going to get uh, about 9.7, I believe. Uh, of actual storage space when you own the 16 gigabyte version. A little more than five gigabytes, almost six gigabytes are used already ahead of time. If you need more space, you have a micro SD slot that supports up to 64 gigabytes. Here you have your micro SD slot uh, right here. And this battery is 2600 milliamp battery. It tends to last for a solid amount of time with frequent usage and really trying to actively drain the battery, I managed to get about nine hours of battery life out of this. So it is a, it's a solid performer. It's not the best, but it'll get you through a, a solid day. If you're on moderate usage, it'll, it'll definitely last you throughout your day without issue. If you're a heavy user, you might have to reach for it once or twice to, uh, to plug in your phone and recharge the battery.
Now let's talk about some of the specs. It has a 1.9 gigahertz quad core processor. Now I know some people were expecting an octa core processor, but this thing still moves along. It also has 4G LTE. Uh, depending on your network, the strength of the 4G will vary according to your area. It also has Wi-Fi, A, B, G, N, and AC as well. And then you've got NFC sensors. You've got for, for mobile payments and data transfer, DLNA, got Bluetooth 4.0 and two gigabytes of RAM. So there's a lot of things that this phone can do and it moves along fairly well. I haven't had many issues when it comes to performance, you know, whether I was playing games or I was uh, listening to music, I was downloading things. Things tend to move along at a good pace. The only issues I ran into were related to the Sprint network, which is unique to my area, so I'm not really going to hold it against the phone itself. As far as the Galaxy S4, it's going to be... I can't imagine a situation where you really feel like things are letting you down. Uh, the benchmarks on the computer scale say that they're doing great, and the real-life performance tends to lend credence to that as well. I didn't see any issues of sluggishness, any major lag or anything like that, aside from the home button issue that I alluded to earlier. Right now you're hearing a lot of noise because the back speaker is turned on. That's where they have the speaker towards the bottom. Let me turn it down a little bit. Uh, so the volume is very loud on the speaker. Now the audio quality isn't the best around, but it's solid enough. And when you reach this kind of volume, it's good to be able to have the option in your phone that is going to reach that. So now let's talk about the screen a little more. Like I mentioned before, it's a 5-inch display. It's 1080p. So you're getting over 440 pixels per inch. The display is Super AMOLED Plus. So you're getting all the great things about Super AMOLED Plus as well as the bad now the great thing as you can see maybe not on the screen but the colors look very nice very warm and they have very good contrast levels now red colors especially tend to pop because super amoled plus does a very good job with saturation when you unlock your screen, uh, you're going to see that it's the red is, looks very nice, the blue as well. But there is one problem. Uh, when you go into the browser, you might not pick it up, but there is definitely a tint that is not quite right. The white backgrounds don't look as true to white as you would see, so the white balance is a little bit off. So you see this uh, when you're doing lighter colors. But now this is an issue of preference. It's not a deal breaker at all. You're going to notice like a more of a tint than you would typically see on an IPS plus display but it's still a very good display the text looks incredible thanks to the high resolution screen the colors look very good has nice brightness has nice contrast so it's just a matter of preference if you're one of those people that hate super AMOLED plus without apology then maybe this isn't going to be the device for you but most other people will notice that it still looks good and it's still very much a nice screen to have the hardware on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is pleasing to me because it runs very smooth. Now it does have the quote unquote cheap feel that plastic tends to have on Samsung devices. So if you're a plastic hater, this is going to rub you the wrong way. But I actually like it because it is very light at 130 grams or only 4.6 ounces. And the size of the phone is big, you know, but by comparison of what we see today, it's big but slim. So at 136.6 by 69.8 by 7.9 millimeters, which translates to 5.38 inches by 2.75 by 0 0.3. Uh, so it is thin and it is uh, very nice to hold. It runs a little bit hot towards the top if you use it for extended periods of time, uh, like an hour or so, like say if you're watching a movie or something. But other than that, I didn't have any issues with it. And I did like the screen. And there are some great things to this phone besides just the design of the hardware. Uh, something that I mentioned before, there's sensors towards the top. And when you play around with the gestures, there are a lot of things you can do. So for instance, if I want to browse on this page, I could swipe, but I didn't actually touch it that time. I just waved my hand across the top sensor. So when I did that, it went a full page size rather than just me going like that over and over again. I can easily get to the top or to the bottom. Now, uh, if I'm in a tab browser, like right now, if I wave my hand to the left or right, it knows to automatically switch to the next tab 
oh, wait, I'm going in the wrong direction. And then I go one more time. Sometimes it's not uh, recognizing you right away. So you will, you will run into some issues there. But it is kind of cool. Another great feature of with the gestures is if I'm getting an incoming call and I just wave my hand like that, it knows that I want to accept the call and it automatically goes into a uh, speaker mode so I can quickly get to the call and respond that way. Another exceptional feature is AirView. Now AirView is kind of like what you saw on the Samsung Galaxy S that it, uh, I'm sorry, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2, that when you hover over something, it knows that you mean to get more information about it. So a cool thing is in Flipboard, for instance, if I hover over cover stories, I see a link and I get a preview of what's going to be in that section. If I hover over news, it ex expands and allows me to actually get an idea of what's going I'm going to see without having to actually tap on the link, go into the section, see one thing, and have to go back. So that's a cool feature. AirView works in certain applications. It doesn't work in every application, but you can use it in Calendar, in your email app, uh, not the Gmail, but specifically, in, um, let's just say I want to just hover over this one so I don't have to actually tap on it to see what that person was talking about. I get a quick view and then I hover out and then I go back about my business. This also works on the web. A couple of the video apps, if you're watching video, you can just hover over and quickly see a preview. The interesting thing about the Galaxy S4 is that it has features galore. Uh, the set It has so many features that they actually had to put tabs in the settings menu instead of just one long list. They broke it down into four sections because there's a lot going on here. And that's pretty much the theme of what you would say with the Galaxy S4. Yes, it kind of looks similar to the Galaxy S3, but they've made upgrades to the hardware on all levels and they did the same to the software. It's running Android 4.2 software and it has a lot of TouchWiz customizations, additions, and just all around enhancements. Now, some of them you'll never use, for instance, group play, which is pretty much overkill. But I will say that once this gets into the hands of more people, this will be one of the defining phones of the year. It actually already is one of the best phones that you're going to see in 2013. I love the feel of the phone. I had some complaints about air view and gestures and some of the software changes that they've made. But overall, I do, I, I wouldn't even say like, I would say, I'd say I love the Samsung Galaxy S4. Uh, if you have to go into a store right now and pick this up, I'm pretty sure you'll be happy with the purchase, provided you're someone who isn't obsessed with plastic versus metal when it comes to the hardware debate. There are a lot of features in this device that are going to take you away from that uh, and you can actually make a lot of changes and really make this phone your own and take advantage of some of the features they have there's so many features in here i'm actually not going to get to them in all in this one video there's going to be an additional software video that you can take a look at you can click the link available uh, to see more but to keep things short the samsung galaxy s4 is an incredible device and it's available on Sprint, AT&T, and T-Mobile. This is the Sprint version that I'm testing right now. It's going to come to Verizon later on. But this is a great phone, and it's going to be one that you're definitely going to want to pick up.